Hello students, we're going to work out two questions on apply Newton's law to different situations. Talks about an object being on a ramp, something like this, and you are trying to apply a force not parallel to the ramp, you're not applying a force that way, instead you're applying a force this way. And in so doing, you're trying to push the object up. You have to find the acceleration with which the object moves up the ramp. You know that if you apply a bigger force, it'll accelerate faster. If you don't apply a force, it's going to come down. Or if your force is not big enough, it'll come down. So like now I'm applying a force, but it's not enough. It's coming down. So let's uh, go look at that question and try to solve it. First question talks about a four kilogram block and it is sliding up the plane on a 30 degree incline as shown in the figure. Okay, if the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the incline is 0 0.700, what will be the acceleration of the block if a 50 Newton horizontal force pushes on the block? Okay, so the first and most important thing when you try to do such problems is to draw a free body diagram. Now, a free body diagram has to be drawn clearly. And when you draw the free body diagram, it's important to remember that the weight of the object always acts vertically down and the normal force acts perpendicular to the surface. Okay, so the weight is always vertically down and the normal force is at right angles to the surface. And in this particular case, there is a third force that is being applied. So here are the three forces, one, two, and then, okay, also there is friction. And that's the X and the Y axis. How does friction act? Friction always opposes motion. So since you're trying to push the object up, friction is going to be down and it is tangential to the surfaces. Therefore, it is as shown in the diagram. These are the four forces. You see, for convenience, we have fixed our X and Y axis as shown. The X axis is along the ramp, as you can see, and the Y axis is perpendicular to the ramp. That means the uh, force of friction, which you have here, the force of friction is along the X axis. The normal force is along the Y axis, but the weight is neither along the X or the Y. Same thing with the applied force. So that means we have to resolve or break down the weight and the applied force into its components. So after you fix the axis, you got to decide which one you're going to break. How do you know? Those forces that are neither along the X or the Y, those are the ones that you break into the X and Y components. So let's do that. Now on the left hand side, you have the complete diagram. It, uh, you can see that I have split mg into its x component, which is mg sine theta, and the y component, which is mg cosine. And again, how do you know this is cosine theta? Because this angle would be theta. And therefore, this is the adjacent side that makes this the cosine. And therefore, this is the sine. Now let's do the same thing to the applied force. When it comes to the applied force, this angle and this angle are equal. Which means, now this, you can see that, the brownish arrow pointing up, becomes Fa cosine, because that's the adjacent side. And this one, again, acting down, is Fa sine. So, if you look at the right-hand side, I have now erased mg 
and f sub a because they are already represented by their two components. So now on the right side you only have the x and the y forces. I, I hope that's a little bit clearer because now you can see if you take the net force along the y-axis there are three forces N is up, FA sine theta is down, MG cosine theta is also down. So down is negative, up is positive. That's why you have N positive N minus FA sine theta minus MG cosine theta. That is the net force and the net force must be equal to mass times acceleration. That's what I've done there. So that is on the uh, y-axis. But is there an acceleration on the y-axis? There is no. So I have to change that to zero. And on the x-axis, I'm going to change it to uh, ax. So now look at the forces on the x-axis. On the x-axis, what do you have? On the x-axis, you have Fa cosine theta acting up. You have friction acting down. Mg sine theta acting down. So what's the net force? Fa cosine theta minus friction minus Mg sine theta. That should be equal to mass times acceleration. Because we know there is going to be an acceleration along the x-axis but there was no acceleration along the y. I hope that's making sense. So now the only thing that is left is to substitute for friction. Friction we know is mu k n and therefore that's the only change here and that is the physics. That's it. Now, whatever you're asked to solve for, you can. In this particular case, we are asked to solve for the acceleration, which is A sub X. So let's do that. It's a simple matter of substitution now. The applied force is given as 50. Uh, so I'm going to substitute into this N minus 50 sine the angle is 30 minus 4 times 9.8 times cosine of 30 is equal to 0. Okay, so that comes out to be 25. This is 33.95 equal to 0. So take both and take it to the other side. The negative becomes positive and you get 58.95. Once you have that, we will plug that into this equation, which is what I'm doing now. Since we need to find the value of A sub X, so 50 cosine 30 minus friction, which is mu k n, you see, mu k is 0.7, and we found out to be 58.95 minus mg sine 30 is equal to m times a x which is 4 times a sub x do the math uh, carefully though you got to do the math carefully because if you miss a sign you're going to miss everything so do it carefully and when you do that you get the first term to be 43.3 the second term is uh, 41.3 and the third term is 19.6. So put all that and uh, the left hand side happens to be negative 17.6 is 4 times a sub x. Uh, divide both sides by 4 and you get a negative answer. And you're like, why did we get a negative? All right, the simple reasoning is that the block, the, with the force that you applied, you're not able to keep this block sliding up. In fact, it's coming down because you've not applied a force enough to keep it going up. That's why you got the acceleration as negative.
I hope that makes sense. And I forgot to put a negative there. Okay, that is negative 4.4 meter per second squared. That is what you get. That is the first one. Now, here is a second question that uh, you really have to look at. Now, to understand how any question is worked out, you have to read it. You to visualize, draw a diagram and all that. So let's do that. A 600 kilogram car is going over a curve with a radius of 120 meter that is banked at an angle of 25 degrees. You know banking is where the outer side of the road is slightly higher than the inner side at curves. And that is to keep the car on the road, otherwise it will go straight, it will tend to go in a straight line and will not be on the road. So that's the reason. But this curve is banked at 25 degrees and the car is taking the curve at 30 meter per second. The coefficient of static friction between the car and the road is 0 0.30. What is the normal force? exerted by the road on the car You're looking for the normal force so there are many ways to set up the x and the y axis normally for banking you have the x and the y axis like we always do x and y x is horizontal y is vertical and i found out that if you keep it that way there's a lot more math steps and confusion. And so if you now rotate the axis, just like we do for a ramp, usually, rotate it, and why? Because we're asked to find the normal force. So if you rotate it, in this particular special case, if you rotate it, the normal force is along the y-axis. See that? So you need not break it. So that's why I'm going to do that, but we pay the price for that, you know, you have to. So look at this diagram and try to understand. That's how we normally have our X and Y axis. If you do it like that, it's going to be tough. So let's just rotate the X and the Y axis. Let me go. So that's how we... Uh, okay, so we set it up like that and let me go back a little bit All right, here are the f three forces that act. I, I told you The weight always acts vertically down the normal force is perpendicular to the surface Friction is tangential. There is no change So that's what I've shown but because I have rotated the axis did you notice that the normal force is along the y-axis friction is along the x-axis so the only force that you got to break into its components is the weight mg so let's do that but you know how we pay the price the centripetal force is this way watch this now since we rotated the axis we also have to Resolve the centripetal force into its two components. Well, I, we can do that. Let's first break the weight into its components. We know that it's mg cosine theta, you know, because this angle is theta, so that's mg cosine. This is mg sine. So we got that. Now that's the centripetal force. Centripetal forces towards the center of the circle. And so we got to break that. Let's call that F sub C for centripetal force. Break that into its X and Y. Be careful about the arrows. Look at how they point. Now this is the cosine and the top one is the sine. Now we can apply Newton's uh, law, second law, to the situation. Net force along the y-axis. How many forces along the y? 
you got uh, the normal force you got mg cosine theta which is negative right so you got n and mg cosine theta and you also have fc sine theta so fc sine theta is positive so n minus mg cosine theta minus fc sine theta is equal to zero. Okay. So that means n minus mg cosine theta is equal to okay, minus because we know the centripetal force is mv squared over r minus mv squared over r sine theta is equal to zero. Now substitute the values and you see m is, uh, oop, mass is 600. I have the mass from the previous question so in my head I'm going to change that to 600. And you got 9.8 cosine 25 minus 600. Uh, the velocity is 30 so 30 squared divided by 120 times sine 25 okay is equal to zero okay when you do that math n minus 5329 minus 1901 is equal to that and so n minus 7230 is equal to zero so n is equal to 7230 7230 newtons that's how we do it so one argument here could be if you take n the normal force up and oh, and mg cosine theta and if you look at this you're like but isn't fc sine theta up so shouldn't we add so that is the problem this is a pseudo force so the centripetal force is mass times velocity squared by radius which is acting on the object that way which means the object is actually pushing the opposite way and it is a reaction that contributes to the normal force. So that means, although we drew the centripetal force this way, the reaction on the car, we're looking at the forces on the car, is the opposite way. That is why the normal component, Fc sine theta, which was shown up, when it's acting on the car, is actually pushing down on the car. I hope that makes sense. That's a very important part. So that's when we get the right answer. And sure enough, this is a difficult question uh, because especially because if you don't apply and understand that the force on the car is the centripetal force and the car is pushing back on the road, creating an opposite force, then you're going to you know get messed up with the signs so i hope that makes sense thank you and see you on the next one